in the right spot. You're, you need to be next door. That's okay. where everybody is. All right. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh, you're welcome. Thank you. Uh -huh, you're welcome. In the heart of Austin, you'll find legendary bootmaker Lee Miller. Well, if you're ever in Austin, Texas, a little run down on your soul, I'm going to tell you the name of a man to see. I won't tell you right where to go. Lee's one of the most sought-after cowboy bootmakers in the world. He's got a wait list that's four years long, and that's only if he's accepting new customers. But he wasn't born a cowboy. In fact, he grew up in Vermont. I grew up, you know, in a, in a time when... Uh, when the counterculture was embracing cowboy boots. We were watching, you know, westerns on TV. I had two older brothers and they were wearing cowboy boots. My mother rode a horse and she wore boots. And so I think I would just, I, I, I was caught up in all of that. So, so you already have? We've got some boots ready for yeah, you. Uh, so these are all set cold. Awesome. And, and the only thing I had to do is... Right. They uh, there was a guy who was working for Charlie who was a graduate of the same school that I came from. And when Charlie said he needed help, the guy said, hey, let's try and find Lee Miller. He's a good bootmaker. The Charlie he's talking about is Charlie Dunn, the biggest, baddest, coolest bootmaker in the West. He went on to have a huge impact on Lee's career. I'll never forget uh, that day because I had kind of gotten into a fight at work with the town sheriff and the owner of the shop. And I realized that I had to quit or I was going to be fired. So I, I left work and I went home and I was sitting in my room going, what the heck am I going to do now? And the, there was a knock at the door and it was saying, hey, do you want to come to Texas? He's the one to see. Charlie's been making boots over there. He says about 50 some odd years. But honestly, working for Charlie was like working for history. Because you could ask him, you know, Charlie, what did they do in 1920? And he could tell you. He was part of that. He lived it. He, and so that was impossible to find anybody, you know, uh, who could do it, who could, who could be that informative. And also, Charlie was very artistic. He's a, he was a much better artist than I am. So I, I d depend on a ruler and all kinds of little devices to keep my act together. And Charlie just freehanded everything. These days, Lee is the mentor to two up-and-coming women bootmakers, Dana and Charlotte. You know, you could sit there and read a book about how to make or do anything, but um, it's nothing like having a one-on-one -on -one coach or even sitting in a classroom because you can say, like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but this is not coming out right, and I think I'm doing it exactly, and all it takes is one person who's been doing it for a really long time to look at you and say, you're holding the knife wrong, your angle's off, you just need to sharpen it. I know my progression wouldn't even be half the way it was uh, working one-on-one -on -one with Lee. There are more and more women doing it today, and there, there was a point when I was not really of the opinion that they could do it. But I, I got proven wrong that women can do anything that a man can do. There's a woman bootmaker in uh, New Mexico that goes by Dina McGuffin. She said it perfectly. I kind of love this quote. She basically said that there's only one difference between a woman and a man. And last time she checked, you don't use it to make boots. Let's be clear. If this is making you want some Lee Miller boots, don't get too excited. You ain't getting them soon. I wasn't joking about the four-year wait. So that would be for new customers, but for reorders, an existing customer, it's 18 months. So we have two different lists. We actually have three lists, one list if you want to become a customer, and then, you know, once you become a customer, that's a different list. Although, he might make an exception if you happen to be Tommy Lee Jones playing tough Texas Ranger Woodrow Call in the 1989 classic Lonesome Dove. They needed the boots in four days, so we did it. So the boots that you see in the movie that he's wearing, those are the ones we made. So you can make boots quickly when you have no choice. You know, when you, when you wear a pair of running shoes, you know, it's all, it, you're kind of uh, disconnected from the earth. You're, you know, they're cushioned and laced and padded and this and that. But you, when, when you wear a pair of boots, 
you feel, I think, more of a connection to, the, to where you go. So I know for me, even to this day, I feel better mentally if I'm wearing my boots. So it's, it's something about boots that, and, and I don't know if you own any boots or if you own any boots, but. I want some now. <laughs> I, I can't even get on the wait list though, right? Well, yeah, but you can get other boots. <laughs> this is not, we're not the, uh, there's 300 boot makers in the I'm United never States. I'm going to go anywhere else to get boots at this point. I mean, even though I'm a native Texan, I've never owned or particularly wanted a pair of cowboy boots. You'll typically see me in flip flops. I desperately want a pair of Lee's handcrafted boots now. This story was produced by Danny Brandemarn and Rhea Farich with assistance from Michelle Mejia for Stories from Deep in the Heart, a project of Texas Folklife.